Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. Now, this morning, doctors performed a surgery to cut off his arm, which has been rotting away ever since his stepmother hit him with a cutlass as punishment. The target, the target was his back, but in defense, the boy lifted his hand to block the cutlass. The victim of this is just five years old and will now have to live with an amputated right arm for the rest of his life. Really sad story indeed, coming from Abra Asebu, Kwamankasi in the central region. Now the father and stepmother are in police custody right now, and we bring you an update from Richard Kujunia, uh, uh, who has been kept close for us. But this brings to the fore the horror being experienced by children in many parts of this country. So how do you discipline troublesome children or children seem to be troublesome without resorting to abuse or violence? Very difficult line for many parents. Today, child protection is top on our agenda. First though, here is Richard Kujunia Akon's report on the surgery. We are here at the recovery ward at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, where Isaac, the five-year-old boy, got his left hand amputated. Doctors say they've been highly successful with the operation. The hand, right to the elbow, was affected in this operation. Now this is how it all started. Isaac, a KG2 people, is said to have defecated on the floor. Her stepmom, Ifua Abedua, protested and as a way of punishing him, attacked him with a machete. Isaac's left hand was eventually cut, but the stepmom refused to care for him. The hand started decomposing. Two good Samaritans saw him in a terrible state while he was accompanying his stepmom to the farm in his current condition. Isaac was eventually brought to the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, but doctors here needed the consent of the parent for his arm to be amputated. Ifua Abedua, his stepmom, was arrested, wrote her statement with the police, admitting she caused the harm to the boy. The father of the boy on Tuesday surfaced at the hospital to sign the consent form. He did indeed sign, but was picked up by the police shortly thereafter. The hand was amputated in the early hours of Wednesday. Isaac now lays here innocently, slipping the pains away. He is now awake and attempts to lift his hand for the first time after the surgery. So I'm just walking out of the recovery ward at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital where the five-year-old boy is currently uh, recovering after uh, the medical surgery that was done. We have been speaking with the medical social worker here at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, Felicia Tete, and she is asking for support, financial support, because the boy needs to get back to school. And at least if the general public would help in getting the boy some prosthetic hands, it will be in order. Just a sad story, but we are still liaising with our district social worker offices to solicit for funds so that we philanthropists can come in because we are still soliciting for funds. As for the mother, we don't even know the whereabouts, so we still need support from philanthropists so that we can all come together as a team and support this church financially. Financially, social welfare. We are handicapped. We don't have money for that, but we are trying our best. So we are pleading with the public that if God touches their heart and they want to support these charges, hands are open and we, we are, our doors are open to welcome them. What kind of support beyond the financial support would you play or would you require that these children, uh, the, ch the child is taking? We will liaise with the district social worker to contact any of the relatives First, we make sure the child will be enrolled into school after the, this thing has been settled. Then we we'll see how best financially we can assist. We have policies that we can use to support this child. So we are still, but we, all we need is a distance relative that we entrust the child into his care for now. Then we we'll see the child is okay, then we we'll see the way forward. I have been speaking with the district police commander, DSP Paul Akonde. He confirms that the two the father of the child and then the stepmom of the child are still in their custody. Richard Kwejunyakon, Joy News, Keep Coast. So he's left to the, his fate is actually in the hands of philanthropists, but 
is it how it's supposed to be? In the studio with me is Richard Ajete, Social Protection Specialist with the Gender Ministry. She's also, of course, with the Social Welfare Department. That is under the Gender Ministry. Um, Ms. Ajete, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Also joining us via phone is Evelyn Boboku Bleno, is the National Coordinator of DOFSU. And also joining in the conversation is Aku Heifron, who is an accomplished clinical psychologist. Ladies, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very well. So let me just begin with you, um, Ms. Ajete, since you're here in the studio. What does the Social Welfare Department, the ministry, your unit, make of what has just happened in Cape Coast? I think uh, this is a, a child protection issue. And normally when there's a child protection issue, there are many ethics involved. And the primary stage have been taken. And so what the ministry is not doing is to wait and see after the, the child has been discharged, then social welfare will come in with the various modalities to follow it. Wait and see modalities, that sounds quite bureaucratic and not very proactive, uh, for, 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 to, be, to, be, to be very frank. What does that even mean? What I mean is that when, it, when we talk of, when we are referring to child protection cases, child protection normally erupts from violence, or abuse or, or neglect mm -hmm. of the child. And in such instances, you deal, you look at the perpetrators, which are the parents that's been shown. And so what the ministry or the department need to do currently is to assess the situation and set up the social protection systems in place. Are there any social protection systems in place? What, how does it work typically? Basically, when we look at the child protection system within the social welfare system, we have standards. And these standards uh, address this violence and neglect and abuse. In the case of the child, it's mainly related to physical abuse, mm -hmm. where the child has incurred an injury. And so what the next step is to look at the standards critically and how to strengthen the, the, the standards. This is a vulnerable child. This is a vulnerable parent. And so it falls within the vulnerability line. So both for, for you, your analysis is that both the child and the parent are vulnerable? Basically. Okay. So what, your role, of course, is child protection. What are you going to do? I'll have you think of that briefly whilst I bring in um, uh, uh, the uh, national coordinator for DOFSU, Evelyn Bobo Kubleno. Ms. Kubleno, may I find out from you how, whether or not DOFSU has uh, followed this story at all? Have you followed it? Yes. Uh, the central regional uh, coordinator of DOFSU is following the case. Uh, currently, and uh, for us, we are looking at the the abuse side as the criminal side of the case, mm -hmm. and we are trying to do our work. It's unfortunate that uh, this thing happened. You know, correct. Cor you want to correct a child. Correction. You can correct a child, but when the correction goes beyond, and then. You know, inflicting harm on the child is no longer a correction. Now it tends to abuse. Okay. And uh, and and uh, the laws are there. The legal framework are there. Yeah. The criminal code is there. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the we have children's act, and then the domestic violence uh, mm -hmm. act is there. So we will the any of them will pin the parents. But you see the vulnerability as my colleague uh, was saying the way the child the child's uh, um how do i call it the child's interest comes most what will be good for the child you look at the parent are we going to take the child from the parent and maybe place uh, him somewhere <laughs> or are we going to when we send the the, the parent you know our, of course we are going to send them to court and court is going to you know take uh, the, the justice is going to be given to the child so speaking so of that M M Kobleno, speaking of justice we seem to be in between keeping uh -uh. a child keeping a child with his family and mm -hmm. and administering justice on this same family that has hurt the boy typically mm -hmm. typically how does the law allow or oh, how does the law deal with this particular situation? Uh, 
yeah, so that's where the the, the child will send the, the the family tribunal will come in, and then the child's best interest will be given. We're looking at the parents, and then looking at the child's best interest. Will, will it be uh, uh, good for the child to stay with the parents, continue to stay with the parents, or we will take the child uh, from the parents and place him somewhere that he will get the best that is where the, we, we, doing the criminal aspect, will send it uh, to the court for prosecution, and then the, 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 the court will take it from there. The, so, that is the social services will take it from there. So what happens to the mother? Now bear in mind, the mother is, uh, the stepmother is pregnant. She's carrying a baby uh, in her stomach at the moment. So if we're talking about vulnerabilities, the baby in the stomach is vulnerable, yeah. and the child uh -huh. is vulnerable. How is Dove Su going to advise uh, the prosecutors, for example, to deal with this problem when they take them to court. Yeah. So the the, the we will give uh, we will uh, pray to the court to see the woman's uh, condition. Since there is an innocent baby also inside, also coming, and we need to protect that child also to put her under uh, under. Of the first of all, I will even want clinical psychologists to come in and then uh, they examine the lady to see if she has any uh, uh, psychological problem. You know, sometimes certain things happen and then you don't know why. What is the problem in the house? Why should a parent beat the child like that? Is there, if there is, uh, is it any anger? Because I learned this is a, a step child. So yeah. what is it? We need to find out. Then we can come out uh, to say that no. Uh, maybe uh, the child should not stay with the mother or the child should continue to stay. Maybe the woman herself has a problem and which we need to address. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so on that note, let me bring in, hold on for me, Ms. Kublenu, let me bring in Aku Heifron. She is a clinical psychologist, so yes. she can answer the question that you've just raised. Yes. Ms. Heifron, yes. let me find out from you. Uh, we've seen a stepmother try to... Um, uh, it, 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 it discipline the boy, sort of, and she throws a cutlass, she throws a machete, knowing mm. very well, I'm sure, the dangers mm. involved in doing this. What yeah. could possibly be going on through the mind of this woman? Um, this is, it would be difficult to tell you exactly what she might be thinking about, or she could have been thinking about when she did what she did. But definitely she had, she cannot say that she didn't know that she was going to inflict pain on the child. Mm. And the extent of the pain, maybe she didn't know, but she knew definitely there was some amount of pain that she was going to inflict on the child. So yes, she's carrying a baby, but then she needs to see some amount of law, she needs to charge some way, somehow. Because the fact that you're carrying a baby should make you even more sympathetic towards another human being, mm -hmm. rather than one to hurt the child. You see, the fact that the child is not yours doesn't make the child any less human than the child within your stomach. Usually, when you're pregnant, you feel even more for others than you would have even if you were. So then, notwithstanding, would we'll say that she has something in within her which has to be dealt with, be yeah. it psychologically or legally. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. we need to take care of the boy. Currently, what he needs is a lot of crisis counseling. Yeah. Because he is going through a period where he's losing his arm. And therefore, he needs to be able to be told how he's going to survive subsequently. What is going to happen to him? Uh, is he going to get an artificial arm somewhere along the line? Is he going to live without it? And he has to gain some training as to how he's going to survive without his natural arm. Because mm. as at this time, or for all this while, he was using both arms all of a sudden. 
he lost one as a result of his mother and his stepmother's anger. I wonder what a five-year-old could have done that could have angered her so much to the point of throwing a machine. But well, she did. Okay. So and what's established from your submission is that this boy needs counseling. He needs a lot of it. He needs a lot of counseling. Let and me throw needs... that. Let me throw that back to uh, the the social protection specialist mm -hmm. uh, with the gender ministry. I was asking you earlier, what is going to happen in this special case? It doesn't look to me, and I've got to be very frank about this with you, Mr. Ajete. It doesn't look to me as though there is a plan for at the at, at the at the ministry or at your outfit. It doesn't look to me like there is a plan. Am I wrong? No, you are wrong. You are, you are totally wrong because we have the social protection system. And once we have the social protection system, anytime such incidents occur to keep the child safe and ensure that you meet the, the required international required standard that has been set, you look at you have to involve the key players that are involved. That's the general picture. That's the general picture. I'm but looking at this specific case. In this, this specific boy. case, it the case has happened in the, in the, in the, from the department point of view. You do the situation analysis, that which is going on. We have a social welfare at the district level, which is money situation. So she, they are doing they will forward the assessment. The, they will assessment and forward back to the national level. Have they started that assessment yes, already? Yes, they have started. Okay, what do they tell you at, the, at this point? What, what they are saying, they are giving you the information in regard to the, the steps that have been taken to ensure that they get the child is saved. So what steps have they taken? The steps that the child has been updated and they, 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 they are seeking for the distance relative mm. to come on board. And seeking from uh, seeking help from the NGOs and civil society organizations. That's the problem, isn't it? Because of social welfare, social welfare, you're supposed to be in charge of the welfare. But what your representative in the region was saying was basically, essentially, cup in hand, begging the people of Ghana to say, "Can you send us some money to take care of this boy?" No, see, this this situation that we have, or this case that we have, have need an holistic approach to it. You can't solve for one approach. The child, after they, he has been discharged, you need to link the child to social protection systems we have in the country. And see, for, for example, the Life of Empowerment Against Poverty Program, you can link the child on that as an OVC child to take care of for the rest. Then you seek assistance from NGOs who may help as giving her the artificial uh, help and or something. Then the child capacity needs to be built and reunite back to school. Some of these programs are seated with the ministry. You know, within the, our welfare system, our welfare com component system, when such cases happen is that, first of all, you, you need to maintain a balanced relationship, which is based on mutual trust between the child and the parents. That's the key critical work of a social welfare. Then after that, you ensure that the child rights, the child has his dignity and rights. And so it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a process, it's a cycle, social process, and you don't just jump and come in. But definitely there are SEALs and NGOs in the area of social protection that may also come on board to help. Is it not that the department, the uh, unit, the department is really overwhelmed and cannot seem to deal with these problems that come up, especially about children, how to take care of them in the, in the case which we have seen now that the parents cannot be trusted to take no, care of No, I, I disagree with you. You are not overwhelmed? No, we you are have not. You no, have no, enough no. money, you have enough it's not, it's not, You see, managing social... I mean, resources, I mean. Resources, yes, there can be inadequate resources. But in managing social situation, it's not necessarily about money. Because you go be between psychosocial level before you go to the social protection itself. And then we have existing laws and policies in place. And so in this case, you see what you apply to. For instance, as my colleague earlier mentioned, mm. we have the, the Juvenile Justice Act. We have the Criminal and Offences Act. Most of these legal provisions are there. So you look at the situation, you analyze it, you set up a uh, child uh, tribunal case where maybe the offended will be persecuted. How do we take on the child? So it's a process. So it's not like that immediately this happened, then you are just... You have to go through You have process. to go through the process to make sure that you achieve the holistic goal you are targeting. For call. mind you, in child protection, there are key issues that we look at. We are looking at the survivor of the child. That is, the child be able to meet its basic human needs. You are looking at the development of the child to ensure that it achieves all its potential that they have in the world. You also ensure that the child's rights is being protected. Then you also ensure that the child is participated in any decision making. 
So it go process. So with that, you can't just jump. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of not jumping into uh, conclusion, um, let's get on Facebook. We've put a question there. Uh, we'll take your thoughts as well and take the responses of our resource persons. And the question is that we're actually looking at the bigger picture. How should you treat children who you consider to be troublesome? I mean, children are children if you allow them. And basically, they have to be allowed to be who they are. They are children. But sometimes they may do some things, repeat some actions, you warn them about, etc., that makes them stand out to you as troublesome. How do you deal with those children without resorting to abuse? So we have that on Facebook. And I'm going to take some of your comments. But I'll quickly, take, uh, I'll quickly put this question to uh, my resource persons. Let me start with you. Um, um, uh, let me start with the clinical psychologist Aku Hefer. Aku, is there a way? Is there a way that you can advise parents to deal with children who are supposed to be troublesome without necessarily or without resorting to abuse at all? Sure. Sure. Yes, we have so many ways we can do that. First and foremost, you need to know your child. You need to know the kinds of things that he or she likes or dislikes. Nowadays, we use things we call motivation. Okay? Mm -hmm. So there are certain things that you know. The ones you tell the child that I'm going to do, the child will definitely not want to engage in one thing or the other. You can use that. Then again, you can educate the child as to the implications of what he or she is doing. Okay? Children are not as deaf as we thought they were some years back. Years back, our parents thought we were just deaf and they should just beat us and beat the... Beat, beat the stubbornness out of, out of us. Exactly. But now we realize that children are smarter even than the adults themselves. So what do we do? We talk to them. We let them understand the situations that are at hand. We let them understand the implications of their actions. And then, with time, we should allow them to have time. With time, those stop it. So, if, 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 Aku, based on what you have said, will you mm -hmm. then, are you then suggesting that the troublesome or so-called troublesome children are a creation of the kind of parentage that they have at home? Exactly. Look, we are, we are made of... <laughs> Genes operate in each and every one of us. Okay? So a little of mom, a little of dad makes you. And definitely, there are certain things that one child will do at times. To tell you the truth, some parents will come and tell you, look, I'm scared that the child will turn out to be like I am or I was. So you realize that. At times, it's out of fear, it's out of anger, it's out of trepidation and everything that the child, the parent will want to inflict pain on the child in order for the child not to get to the stage where he or she wants. But what so, shows that the child may get to that stage? You need to be able to deal with the child on different levels. Okay. At times, you withdraw certain things, privileges, etc. And then the child will realize that, look, with this one, I think I have better wise up, I better well, What about the saying answer. about sparing the rod and spoiling the child? That is no, an no, argument. No, no, I'm not saying you should spare but, the rod. Okay. I'm saying that you should but, never But not sparing the, the rod leads to abuse, doesn't it? No, yeah. no, 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 not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Well, you it looks like a a, a, it looks like Miss um, Kublenu does not agree with you on this, on sparing the rod, but Madam Kublenu, you don't seem to agree. Which Spar one is sparing the rod? No. The yeah. the, the, what, oh. I what I want to say is that you will mm -hmm. correct your child, but the correcting should not go beyond. You don't. It shouldn't be excessive to the extent that it you it will cause harm to the child. So as far as you are concerned, a little oh. bit of beating is okay? Beating, no. Beating, how do you beat your child? If you beat a child and then there is a mark, it causes a, a, a pain in the child. There are so many ways, as the, uh, the clinical psychologist is saying, so many ways to correct a child. Example, recently I told my girl, I will celebrate your birthday for you. If you don't stop what you are doing, mm -hmm. period. That ends it. I won't do that again. And I did want she, you to did she change? My mm -hmm. Yes. 
I see. Because she wants to celebrate her birthday. So if I, if she continues be, be misbehaving, the birthday is not going to come on. But do you yes. know, do, do you also, have you also met some children who are really stubborn? Maybe the way I was when I was really, younger. Yes, really, yes. Really stubborn. Really that, stubborn. I mean. For example, we uh, have a uh, counselor. Right. We have a uh, psychologist. You refer the child to them to okay. see. Maybe there is something wrong somewhere. They can help the child. Right. In schools, this is what we've been saying. In schools, you don't just, a child come to school late. You can the child. And maybe the child maybe done, has done something. You can the child. What actually is wrong with the child? You need to find out. Okay. You don't okay. just go ahead beating, killing the child in the name of what? Correction or in the name of discipline. There All is right. a problem there. Okay. That is why we have uh, we have counselors in school. Right. So at home, if you know that you you realize that your child is uh, we call it uh, it has a challenging behavior, you have to develop a positive strategy to deal with that challenging behavior. Okay. Behavior. Okay, I'm uh, going to do, exactly. I'm going to quickly bring in Facebook and then I'll take your, your final comment, Mr. Ajete, and everybody else on the, mm -hmm. on the, on the uh, discussion. But I was going to say that beating, I mean, I'm not part of those people who subscribe to beating because I've had a lot of beating when I was growing up and it mm -hmm. only made me more stubborn. So let mm -hmm. me go on Facebook Thank and you. check out what people are saying. Um, so we put the question there, uh, what should troublesome children uh, how should troublesome children, quote, troublesome children be corrected without resorting to abuse? Let's quickly go through some of your comments uh, that have come up. Let's go up. Okay, so we're working on that. Whilst we're working on that, Ms. Ajete, let me take your uh, concluding remarks on this. The general, the bigger picture. Even though we believe, I mean, it looks, in, and in Ghana, and we've had this conversation in the newsroom, there are parents in the newsroom who believe that, look, Spare the rod and spoil the child. You need to beat them a little, talk to them a little. I don't believe in beating because of my experience growing up because I was beaten and it didn't do, I don't do any, I don't know if it did me any good. I don't think it did. But on the bigger picture, what can a child in Ghana being abused by their parents do? They seem to, there seem to be very limited options for them. Yes, I think uh, this issue is, I've been a, a wake up call and for my ministry, as well as the department, to strengthen our advocacy on the standard that address this child abuse and neglect. We need to strengthen the advocacy. And then again, we need to increase our engagement and dialogue, with a dialogue with the families at okay. the community level for them to understand the dangers involved in this abuse. That is one of the critical things currently we need to do because this has been a wake up call and there might be other vulnerable children who are going through these challenges. But parents are not aware about standards. They are not aware about the engagement. They are not aware about the, the implication of abusing your child mm. at the family level. So we need to do that. And then also we need to strengthen the current welfare and family systems that we have at the Department of Social Welfare. And the you really need to. We, really? Need, we really need to strengthen it because basically those who are quite in the middle class and upper part are more familiar with the standards. But at the community level, where poverty level is so high, vulnerability is so high, and the illiteracy level is so high, they find it very difficult to understand some of these standards mm. as well as the implications. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. let me take your thoughts, Madam Kubleno, about uh, now how Dovsu is going to handle this. You've said that you need to balance the situation between the vulnerabilities, I mean, among the vulnerable people involved. You're seeing the parents as vulnerable, the child in the mother's stomach as vulnerable, the child who has been uh, hit, hit as vulnerable, but there has to be some sort of justice. And I don't know how this is going yeah. to end. I don't know if you can give us any ideas. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first of all, before I, uh, you know, disciplining a child or correct, correct, correcting a child, I, I'll give you another example. Uh, my mother will look at me with an eye. That alone tells me, uh, it tells me volume. You are doing something, she look at you with an eye. It means don't do what you are doing. Caning a child, you know, slapping, insulting, shouting. Sometimes I'm kind of just make the child feel like, you know, and in, in, in other uh, future, the child becomes inferior, how to come out, 
she should be afraid. Mm -hmm. So that one, we need to really, uh, we, we are... We need to put in a lot of education going forward, I think. Uh, yeah, and uh, we have those two coordinators all over the region. Mm. And my appeal to parents or to uh, the uh, civil society, anytime there is something of that, that, uh, such kind, they should quickly report to us so that we go in. Because when we arrest them and we prosecute one or two, this case is a different case, but in, there is a case that I'm handling. If we prosecute one, it serves as what deterrent to others. Okay. So that they will, uh, okay. Uh, this case is a special case where the woman is pregnant, so we are looking at mm -hmm. everything. So uh, that, that, does that mean that is diff this particular case is very difficult because in your laws and in your uh, uh, in your conventions, you haven't really come across such uh, incidences? I'm not, I'm not sure you, you, you haven't. Um, I mean, you know how to deal with cases like uh, this, don't you? Yeah, yeah, how is it possible? We, it how? we know because we are working in collaboration with other uh, stakeholders, so we are going to come together and then we'll see how best we can, uh, because there is another child that is involved. And okay. if we put the, you know, Ghana, I would say, our systems, you know, and institutions, we need to strengthen them so that they can help us in doing uh, mm. a lot of uh, such uh, when we come so to in this case is this boy the, going to be referred to a home is he going the, to be uh, the, the, given to the boy needs a, 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 a lot of counseling no beyond uh, the counseling what's got what's going to happen i mean what's the possible uh, beyond, end beyond to the this counseling story? then we need to the child must we we will refer the child to social welfare Social welfare, to social welfare to take it from there, maybe to a home, a, a, a shelter where he can, he can get more, continue getting counseling, and then also develop. Develop means for you go to school, he gets all the reason his uh, rights, and then because if we have things like that, then the boy we can send the boy to uh, 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 such home. Okay, so between dogs two, between dogs two <laughs> and 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 the social welfare department. We are not yet sure what exactly is going to happen to this boy. Yes. No, when, the, no, when, the, when the, the child is released from hospital, hospital that's where you then can we will come together. But shouldn't we be planning plan now where no, he's no, going? No, 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 no. We'll plan. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Should yeah, it, yeah, I mean, logically, that. shouldn't we be planning what is going to happen to this boy before he gets out of the hospital? That's what my colleague said. That it's a social... Eh? It's a... Uh, we are going to come together, and then we, the planning already, I think, is going on uh, at the yes. Uh, so if it's uh, going level. on, if it's going on, the contention is that so we should have an idea mm -hmm. at this point where he is going to end up, Mr. J.T., shouldn't we? You see, as my colleague saying, rightly saying, in such cases, you have a planning modus you follow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you started the process Francis, already. Yes, started. So, how mm -hmm. is it looking like? What are the likely outcomes of that, this The process? likely outcomes that maybe the child may be separate from the, the parents and keep at a shelter <laughs> home. Okay. Or okay. We, we've, spent, home. we've spent quite a lot of time. Unfortunately, yeah. we need to wrap up. But, um, hey, Madam Hayfron, let me end with you. Go, the bigger picture, again, from your perspective. How should parents work on themselves to be able yeah. to contain their own children? step parents people we who should, are guardians we should How can realize they... that children are humans just as we are be they ours or not they still have feelings and they still have a future so we should determine how we are going to relate to them the fact that we are married to their parents makes them our children too we should consider that prior to getting married to the person's parent, you don't want to take care of the child, then don't get married to the person's child, father or mother. But that notwithstanding, like I said earlier, we should realize that we are all part of the older tree. Hence, when we are doing certain things, we need to be careful as to the implications and the repercussions of whatever it is that we are doing. All right. Because if we don't take care, we're going to hurt the people and destroy their future. Exactly. Like it has happened to this boy. This now. boy who is going to have to live with one hand, and if you I'm, like, exactly. and go into the future. Exactly. So we'll wrap up this conversation with some comments. Uh, uh, Kwame is tweeting at Smith Dazi. He says, it starts with finding 
better words to describe kids beyond troublesome. I totally agree with you. Kids are a product of the environment adults create, including how adults behave. Troublesome adults, troubled kids. Adults should not exert their frustration <coughs> on innocent uh, kids. Very true words there. Um, hating your child is just telling them that violence is an acceptable way of resolving conflict. And this has always been my position. Uh, th this tweet, he's tweeting at our, uh, Mr. Ain underscore GH. This has always been my position. Uh, you tell them that this is how we treat people who do things we don't like. We beat them up, so they end up beating up other people. Unfortunately, we run out of time to bring you uh, the comments. But they are there on our social media platforms, on Twitter. At join news on TV on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash join news on, uh, on TV. Do help yourself with some of the comments. But thank you so much, at my resource persons. I've been doing this with Richard Ajete. He's the director of child protection. Uh, he's with the child protection uh, uh, unit I'm of the gender protection social protection uh, specialist with the gender ministry, also with the social, Depar social uh, okay. welfare okay. department. Also joining us on the phone was Evelyn Bobo Kublenu. He's a national coordinator for Dove Sioux. And then Aku Heifron. She's a clinical psychologist. Great conversation, and I hope that it helps you take care of your children and other children in your custody who are not yours. They are all human beings. And the moment you start seeing other human beings like you see yourself, I think the world will be a better place for vulnerable people like this five-year-old boy.